Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. It's my pleasure today to, to introduce uh, Navod Akiva, um, who is research scientist at Nielsen Buzzmetrics, and before that was uh, uh, the text categorization director at the company called Trendum, and has basically been working on style-based uh, text categorization problems for the better part of eight years. Uh, yeah, that, that's a long time. I, I met Navod at... Uh, a couple of years ago at Kohling and, and Geneva, and at that time I was, I was doing some authorship detection stuff and we sort of found uh, a, a lot of common ground and have been in touch ever since. And uh, today now I'm just going to talk a little bit about Nielsen Buzz Metrics, uh, you know, just a, a little bit of business overview and then also about some uh, technology that, uh, that you guys are using. Um, should be very interesting and thanks a lot for coming. Uh, this uh, it's it's a late slot on a Friday, but today was a crazy day. There were so many talks. Uh, there was no other slot uh, uh, to find, and Navod is only in town for a relatively short time, so we had to do it. Had to squeeze it into the afternoon. So thanks a lot for for being here. Thanks, Navod. Thank thanks, Michael. Hello, everyone. Um, first, I'd like to thank Michael for inviting me. It's a true pleasure, and thank you for being here today. Uh, so my name is Navot and I'm a research scientist at uh, Nielsen Buzzmetrics. Um, before coming here, I thought about uh, what the audience is going to be like and what it would like to hear. Um, so I did some mixture of uh, marketing, promoting our company, and show you a bit uh, I, I, on the second uh, part of the uh, demonstration uh, of the um, presentation here, I'm going to uh, show you some tool that we have uh, previously used uh, to show you some of the technology standing behind uh, what we're doing. Um, so what I'm going to uh, start with is about introducing Nielsen Buzz Metrics, and forgive me, I'm not a PR person, so I'm going to do my best, but <laughs> I'm going to introduce our company, what we do. Uh, what are, who is our clients, what product do we have, what platform do we work for, um, and I'm going to talk about uh, the text analysis um, products and, and systems that we have in Nielsen Buzz Metrics. Uh, right after that, I'm going to talk about CGM, which is uh, Consumer Generated Media. This is our core business. This is what we do. I'm going to explain what that is and why is it so important uh, for the market today. Uh, after that, I'm going to show you um, the trend mine system, uh, some snapshots of a system that we uh, previously developed. Uh, and this is not the current system that we're working on today, but it's going to give you a good flavor of what we are uh, basically able to do. Um, I'm going to talk about the challenge of the term, the, uh, determination of context when we talk about web uh, texts, uh, which is a, a really uh, important challenge. I'm going to show the data flow of the system, uh, some UI snapshots, and I'm going to show you a case scenario of analyzing uh, buzz and uh, other sentiment factors of a TV show. And through that, we're going to see how, what is the importance of the, having the ability to drill down and analyze uh, deeply um, a buzz of a specific show, product, or whatever your industry is. And after that, I'm going to uh, give you some anecdotes about various examples or projects that we've been doing so far. And then Q&A, whatever you'd like to ask, I'll be happy to answer you. If something is not uh, clear when I'm talking, stop me and, and ask. I'll be happy to answer your questions. So, Nielsen Buzz Metrics, uh, actually our core, uh, the core thing that we do in the company is... Um, it's uh, analyzing what we call CGM, Consumer Generated Media. Uh, I'm, go I'm going to define it in just a slide or two. But actually, we analyze what we call word of mouth, the online word of mouth industry that's out there on the web. Uh, we are currently the market, market leaders in the area. And we're um, uh, the leader of uh, analyzing uh, quickly and 
uh, sophisticated uh, manner of the uh, whole area. Uh, Nielsen Cosmetics is just uh, is, is a very young company in a matter that we, we were never called that uh, Nielsen Cosmetics that long. Uh, just uh, about August last year, um, a small co company, startup company from Israel called Trendum, which I was uh, I had the honor of being one of its uh, employees, uh, merged with Buzzmetrics, a New York-based um, uh, marketing research and CGM analysis uh, uh, company. And just a few months ago, we, the two companies got merged with IntelliSeq um, and got uh, become to be Nielsen Buzzmetrics. Um, so the brand is pretty new, but the industry um, has gaining growth for certain amount of time. Um, we actually um, um, analyze uh, vast brands of uh, sources of um, consumer generated media, uh, boards, uh, message boards, uh, blogs, variety of blogs, and other, many other types of uh, consumer generated media. Um, The integration of the three companies uh, increased the, uh, the data value, the value of data that we can provide our customers. And I'm going to show you several customers that we have uh, in a slide or two. Um, uh, one, several of the key uh, questions that we can answer, uh, we, uh, we enabling our clients to answer themselves is, for example, how the customers uh, feel about a specific brand. Okay, give us a brand. And we're going to search our databases and online give you an answer what do they feel about a specific brand. Who is talking about your brand, about your product, about your uh, model that advertises you? Um, um, what is sentiment? Okay, are you talking positively? Are you talking negatively? What are you talking about? Um, um, who is talking out there? Are there uh, some influential uh, authors? or talkers that we should uh, take care, special care about what they're saying. Um, can I influence the word of mouth, uh, online word of mouth uh, communities? Um, and so on and so forth. And I'm going to show you uh, through the whole demonstration, uh, presentation here, how uh, did we, do we answer uh, those questions and even some case scenarios of what we've done before. Okay, so we have a lot of competitive advantages. Um, for example, um, we have a very robust method methodology, research methodology, um, a very robust technology background and technology platform, um, and very sophisticated one. I'm going to uh, talk about it in, in a few minutes. Uh, we have uh, industry accept matrices um, for uh, uh, Buzz for industries, for, for industries, sorry, for, um, uh, we have uh, historical CGM data, meaning that we, not, we didn't start today. If you come and ask uh, for a question about your brand, we can do it historically uh, for p past years. And also we have norms and benchmark due to the fact that we have history. So we, we have benchmarks to test ourselves, test your brand as opposed to other brands, as opposed to the industry and so on. And we currently have the largest CGM uh, database uh, existing. And uh, for all of you who uh, is the first time running into our industry, uh, you're all welcome to uh, surf into uh, blogpulse.com. This is our uh, formerly IntelliSeq uh, website, but now it's Nielsen Metrics. And monitoring online, uh, Millions of uh, blogs, hundreds of thousands of blogs. You can see the actual number of blogs when you enter the uh, website itself. And it monitors whatever you like to ask. You can ask and find a trend, find who is talking about what, and when are they talking about, and so on and so forth. It's a complete world of, of what can you actually achieve and dive in there. This is the part, part, uh, partial uh, list 
of our clients, and you can find uh, quite a big one here. Microsoft actually one big client of ours. Uh, but we have um, um, a lot of uh, companies of Fortune 1000 um, um, at our clients. Um, all sort of interested, industries, sorry. Uh, cosmetics, automobiles, pharmaceuticals, entertainment, which is the large uh, market. And we cover all of those. Um, using our uh, brand polls uh, platform, or core product, we can uh, track brands, we can track issues that people are talking about. Uh, it can be related to politics even. Uh, we have syndicated uh, measures. Uh, we have an online um, uh, data, meaning that we are currently we, we non-stop uh, mining data out of, out of uh, blogs and boards and other CGM uh, sources. And we can either, uh, either uh, perform a syndicated analysis or a focus analysis, depend what we, our actual uh, um, client needs. Um, this is a schema that can uh, give you a sense of how do we uh, actually create our uh, content um, and, and drive intelligence out of it. So here you can see the uh, lower level where all sort of um, CGM sources, sources, unstructured sources, some of them, uh, we are tracking and downloading into our system. Okay, we have the content discovery level, where we are uh, spidering and tracking and filtering, for example, spam filtering and so on. And this is all, all this is the content level. On top of that, we have the content mining, which is the uh, uh, sophisticated. Also, the content discovery is very, very sophisticated because it needs to be uh, very, very uh, efficient, very quick, and to do things uh, that will allow us uh, online tracking uh, and analysis. On top of the uh, content level, we have the content mining, okay, which uh, also all the uh, knowledge is encapsulated within, uh, within, all the research knowledge is encapsulated within this uh, uh, level. All the categorization, automatic categorization, all the uh, entity extraction, and fact extraction, phrase mining, mining for phrase, specific phrase of the data that we get out, and sentiment mining, which is the uh, polarity of the text, positive, negative, or neutral. Okay? And on top of that, we have, on top of this uh, a whole system, we have a human analyst who, uh, uh, in some cases, uh, using this... Uh, uh, data in order to um, provide uh, reports for the clients. Some clients can, uh, some clients get an interface to log into our system and to uh, do part of the things mentioned here by themselves and uh, discover uh, things about the product or industry uh, by themselves. Um, I'm going to mention a few of our key uh, expert, text analysis experts and what they've done. Um, Jonathan Schler is a, a vice president of, of research and development. Uh, he has over 10 years of um, um, development management, uh, specializing in uh, text analysis, text processing, and formerly be before joining uh, Nielsen Plasmetrics uh, or Trendum, the Israel unit. Yeah, that is where before. Uh, he was uh, in Clear Forest, which is another large company, uh, international company for uh, data mining. He was a, a group manager there. And he also spent a few months here working uh, with Joshua Goodman, right? So. Yeah, on spam filtering in Microsoft Research. And for those in the industry, if you have uh, ran into some of these publications, my, um, my say. Okay. Um, Matt Hurst and Nelly Glantz, uh, both sitting in the Pittsburgh branch. Uh, Matt Hurst is a data mining expert. Um, he's a, key for, a member of the founding of Blog Pulse. 
team. And Natalie Glantz is the founder, oh, sorry, the title here, a founder, and she's uh, currently uh, heading the, uh, the uh, Black Pulse uh, uh, team right now. And she has uh, notable um, experience in, in, net, in social networks, which uh, uh, naturally fall into the, um, uh, what Black Pulse does. And there are also several publications of her, mainly on basis of the uh, Black Pulse platform. And this is myself. Okay, I'm going to be very modest. I've been uh, heading in tr uh, Trendum, formerly Nusselt Cosmetics, uh, the categorization team. I have uh, over eight years of experience in text, style-based text categorization. Um, that's all I'm going to say about myself. Okay. So, um, the fastest growing media, okay, we'll talk about CGM. CGM is what I refer to as consumer generated media. This is our core of the company, what we do. But here is a long, very long, very sophisticated uh, definition. Basically, what we're doing uh, is about a variety of sources of online content that users are contributing, sharing, um, and, and, and publishing out uh, on blogs, on boards, on groups, review sites, feedbacks, Usenet, whatever. Uh, this, um, uh, this is very um, uh, increasing rapidly uh, market. Uh, and if you see there is a graph, very interesting graph here. Uh, this is a presentation level of the sources of the CGM and the uh, state of the, uh, uh, of the internet development that they appeared of, means of the richness of the media. And you can see that uh, it, it's, okay, chat is just in between, but we have today consumer blogs, we have um, audio blogs, we have video blogs, we have podcasts, and we have all sorts of new resources, and the volume, the, the number of resources is, is, is uh, raising up really, really rapidly, and also the volume of the text out there, which is needed to be addressed uh, appropriately. Um, so CGM is basically all the uh, data that users contribute, users create, and encapsulate in all those sources. Basically, we would like to get to all of those sources and try to get as much insight as we can for our clients. Okay. Uh, we claim that CGM is the most influential information source today. Uh, we can, you can see that uh, in three different... Um, surveys or questions that we posed to the public. For example, which factor, factors make you most comfortable purchasing a product? You can see that a, a friend recommended it is up to 76. This is word of mouth. Okay? Uh, CGM encapsulates the word of mouth over the internet, over online uh, resources. Okay? What is the best source for, uh, for advice on your product? 67% said another customer. Okay, if you go to a customer review site, you can see what other we've been talking about. If you are the one who sells the product, you're very interested in what people are talking about, what they're saying about your product, right? So this is a, an extremely important source. Among best sources of new ideas about product, word of mouth, 67. Okay, in 2005, it's up to 92. 77 for 67%, now it's 92. So people are counting very heavily on the word of mouth and as it uh, comes to uh, be, become a CGM over the internet. Uh, just yesterday, I got an email today, and I just listed it in my presentation. Uh, I got this um, um, Nielsen Net Ratings uh, saying that uh, user generated content drives half of the US top 10 fastest growing web brands, according to. Okay, this is published yesterday. Okay? What they said, uh, that the, for example, the image shop, okay, the image hosting, like uh, Flickr, that you can see uh, two items later here, okay, is number four among July's fastest growing web brands. Okay, it increased 233%. Okay, heavy.com, video sharing site, okay, like YouTube and so on, okay, and number five spot increased 230%. 
uh, 13%. Okay? Uh, Flickr, as you, most of you must know, uh, okay, growth, and uh, MySpace, which is uh, um, MySpace and Wikipedia, which is all of you know, uh, are also uh, CGM sources. And you can see that it's very important to have those insights from those clients, the insights from those clients, so those people who are talking out there for your brands, for what you're selling, for what, you're, uh, for what the public is talking about. It's not, in, uh, it's not a data that you can, can, you can go and make a survey and get the data out there. It's not, it's not that you can read each message for a, for a, as itself and make a, an inspection of what, what, it, what you're dealing with. It's millions and millions of messages that you have to analyze very quickly, and you just can't stay out of there. If you stay out of there, you're missing something. And I'm going to show you uh, some uh, cases that we actually, um, sorry, actually um, uh, proved our clients how beneficial it is to uh, obtain CGM um, inference. Okay. So, brand pools uh, provide online reporting tool, which is online, okay? Millions and millions of messages online analyzed and reported. Analyst tracking reports. We can either have our analyst reporting your, uh, uh, reporting um, reports to you as a client, or we have industry benchmarks and matrices that uh, uh, automatically can be uh, uh, inferred what, what, how, how do you stand as opposed to them. Um, we, we, the system can uh, be customized to the specific needs of a client, and so on and so forth. This is a slide that talks about um, what is the volume of, for example, um, uh, gender, okay, or age, or whatever slice you'd like to know uh, what's the volume that of, of the specific industry, and we cover those industries in specific, okay, which are, uh, what is the volume, which are, who is talking, what they're talking about, uh, do we like their, the product, don't they like, this is only the industry, right, we have to dive in and to see according to your industry as a client, what can we infer from that, but we can have many, many slices and I'm going to talk about, uh, about some of them when I introduce the trend mine system. Okay, so we cover uh, currently the pharmaceuticals, the automobile, the electronics, nutrition, and entertainment, which is a big market. Okay. Um, now we're going to show you uh, some snapshots and a case study of the train mine system. Train mine system is one of the early versions of our uh, current system, uh, developed by the Israel team at the time. Um, the, but I'm going to uh, apprise the uh, knowledge of having the, the challenge of uh, determine the context of a text when, when we're talking about um, internet or web-based uh, texts, the importance and the challenge as itself. Okay. So, suppose we have, we're not talking about uh, CGM. We're talking about, for example, a CRM um, corpus. Okay, uh, people complaining or or needs help about a specific uh, about something in the company. For example, the CRM of General Motors. Okay, so we have the ability to uh, to mark the style of what they're saying. We can uh, today determine the, their gender, whether male or females, their age, whether they're teenager or adults, the uh, sentiment that you're talking in and uh, a lot of slices that, that out there. But if I don't have the specific context, okay, I don't just know that this is replies from a customer. I don't have a specific context. Uh, what it would benefit me if, to know that 20% 20, 20 of my complaints uh, came from a, a, tw a, tw a female on the 20s, for example. What, would it be sufficient? Of course not. I, I, I have to dive in and get to the context of the messages. Are they talking about the product? Are they complaining? Uh, are they uh, just um, talking about something else? I need to know exactly what the context I'm working in in order to, uh, to, know, to, to benefit more 
from the style markers that I have. This is a non-CGM issue, and this is very easy to, to solve. But we, when we're talking about uh, the CGM uh, uh, area, and we have to determine the context uh, on which we are talking about, uh, there are several issues need, we need to address. And this is aimed for those that are more NLP and machine learning people, so if you don't really, after that, I'm going to finish it pretty quickly. Um, so, for example, the relevancy and coverage is not a trivial issue. If we have a closed set on a CRM system, you know, these are my complaints or my uh, replies from a user. This is my whole world. But if I'm going to, right now, to analyze, for example, a TV show, okay, how do I, uh, how do I get a, a good coverage? How do I determine the relevancy? For example, I, I know, uh, perhaps I know that there is a specific forum discussing this TV show. Okay, so I can go to the forum, download everything, and analyze. But there is a relevancy issue. On this forum, there are people discussing uh, the player and its past characters, uh, other shows, time slots, uh, uh, um, viewing, um, uh, definition viewing quality, high definition, and so on. So there are a lot of uh, irrelevant data that you have to uh, filter out. And also the coverage. Um, imagine that there is uh, uh, data about this specific show that do not reside within a uh, forum of the specific show. For example, I have a forum of uh, fall shows, okay, discussing all sort of fall TV shows, and I need to, to get the data of my specific TV show out of there as well. So I need to, uh, to improve my coverage. This is non-trivial when you talk about uh, large sources and a tremendous amount of data that you have to deal with. Um, there is some, uh, when talking about style-based categorization, uh, and, or the whole area of that, uh, there are uh, many models that vary um, across verticals. For example, sentiment. Sentiment, of, uh, when talking about uh, cameras, is different when you talk about cars. So you have to deal with that. And even those models that are tend to, to, to uh, be considered as less vertical depending on gender, uh, if you don't determine the context, again, we know that half of our uh, texts from, came from males. Okay? We don't, you, you don't have the context specifically. You, don't, you can't beneficial, make it uh, that, uh, as beneficial as if you had the context that you're talking about. Um, and as, uh, uh, as on top of all of those, we need a smart mechanism in order to uh, attach to each of our variety of sources a specific classifiers, specific style classifiers in order to, um, and it's very complicated, so uh, since there are classifiers that matches a, a bunch of uh, wide variety of sources that are one, that, uh, the, uh, those that are specific to each one, you have to uh, be, uh, very, uh, they have very sophisticated matching mechanism in order to attach for each sources, uh, to, to each for each source, its uh, classifier groups, and just to remind me, it an increasing uh, variety of sources and number of sources. The volume is here, here is huge. So what I'm going to show you a bit is trend mine. This is a sophisticated state of the art um, insight ex extraction system. Uh, it enables um, text mine and style analysis over text, over CGM text, with, uh, various, uh, with the various statistic factors as generation. You can determine the generation, uh, age, and uh, gender, and tone analysis. Okay, this is, again, one of the earliest versions that we had. Uh, it's fully configurable. It's online 24-7. Uh, it has advanced filtering capabilities, um, and so on. The, the flow, data flow uh, of the system starts, of course, here in the World Wide Web, where all the CGM data reside. Then there is the download mechanism, downloading this data, inserting it into matching its classifier, inserting it into a uh, um, classifier set of sentiment, authorship, demographics, and so on. Today we have, uh, just, for, uh, just for you know, we have much complex, much more complex uh, uh, platform, excuse me, 
And then we determine the topic or the concept or the context that we were referring before, what is the text is actually talking about. Okay, if I'm interested in set of TV shows, does it fall to one of the categories? Okay, does it not? This is the context determination, the unit. After having, after having all this analysis done, we're inserting all the data into the database, and then the user or the analyst can uh, perform uh, run over queries and so on. This is the UI, general UI of the uh, trend mine. We have here a window where we can select, uh, for example, you have your TV shows launched in 2004. You can select the concept, the topic, the concept that we like, the context that we like to work in it. For example, uh, CSI New York or Desperate Housewives or whatever. Uh, and here we have the panel of the analysis. We have the ability to, to uh, analyze the, the uh, data, the query. Over time or over concept, we can select more than one concept, if you like. Here is a period of time that we'd like to analysis, the graph type that we'd like to get, and here are the comparison factors. For example, we have A, gender and sentiment, and again, this is the, an early version, it's not a complete version, and then we get the categories here. Of course, the name of the actual TV show has to be erased for commercial reasons, and the graphical um, Graphical, uh, the graph that we presented the, uh, with a percentage or the numbers in it. Uh, if we uh, touch the graph, a specific part of the graph, and double click it, we'll get here all the messages related to the uh, specific uh, slice. And of course, we have all sort of other analysis that um, also exist there, but we're not going to uh, work them in this uh, presentation. Um, yeah, please, question. How much of this is a machine generated versus a human? This is totally, the, the data back, backwards, totally machine generated. And what is the, you also said that the analyst, what does the analyst do? The analysts um, generate um, reports for the, um, for the clients if they're required to. But they okay. don't check to see if the sentiment is correct or if the machine has picked up the right. This, when we create the models that classify the sentiment, the age, we check it ourselves. They, they don't go and do it twice. We monitor that, but it's not done by the, this is the, the technical people, the, the R&D people that does that, not the researchers that uh, create the, uh, we monitor that constantly, once in a while. What do you mean when you say sentiment? Is there the tone, positive, negative, and stuff like that? Or? Yeah, you, you get, you, uh, I can, for example, uh, I mark your sentiment, I get adult positive, adult neutral, adult negative. I get the slices that adults talking about positively about my product or my TV show, or whatever, or my brand, or negatively and, uh, and and neutral. And then you can dive in and take, for example, all the negative uh, text and dive in by clustering other techniques and uh, uh, perform, for example, phrase mining. Who is talking? Negatively, what are, they, are they talking about? What are their complaints? I'm going to show you a slide. I'm not going to talk about it a bit. A company, a cosmetics company, that just, you know, they just went, okay, do, try to find something. We're not going to guide you. And we find something that we're, they would never, from the negative sentiment, they would never get anywhere else. And I'm going to get that on one of the slides. So, yeah, we, we actually get slices of the sentiment of the uh, responses of the user, the CGM data, and we can uh, deep dive in, that, in those that you can actually divide them to their uh, age, to their gender, and see how they distribute, what they are talking about, and what bothers them. Thanks. Yes, please. Do you maintain a B2B um, source as well, or is it just um, consumer? What do you mean by B2B? Uh, businesses talking, business decision makers and leaders talking. This is uh, CGM only. This is only uh, public opinions of, uh, on the internet. Okay. It cer certainly uh, can be done over you know, uh, other texts, but this is our speci speciality, and this is what we do. Okay. We monitor yeah, that I community. Think, I think that if you look at like, some uh, developer blogs or something, I'm sure they, have, they can capture that. Yeah. 
Okay. I, you know, just because that's the specific area of interest of mine. So. Right. Right. Definitely. Okay. Um, I'm going to show you how can we dive in uh, using this specific uh, system. Uh, for example, we, uh, we, we, tr we try to, t uh, to track the buzz of a specific TV show. Okay? So you can see that I, I've selected one TV show, I gave it a period of time, and I uh, just said, okay, I want to display the graph, give me the buzz count. How many people, people talked about it in a given time? I have the month here, something uh, uh, September 2005, ending in uh, February 2006, and you see here, all the, this is some percentage scale, and you see here, people are talking about, and we were interested why this decline here. Okay, what what is the uh, big decline in responses uh, between the months uh, November and December of 2005? So what we did is we just dive into this buzz and try to subdivide it, subanalyze it uh, further. For example, we try to uh, compare it by gender, the same buzz graph, compare it by male, females who talked about it, and we see that uh, more males talked about it, but the decline is both male and female. It's much more, much more uh, sharpening male, but it's both. So it, it didn't give us that much insight. So we have to dive in further in order to get um, a deeper insight. Okay, we did it in some iteration, but I'm going to cut it uh, to, to make it uh, shorter. So this is the, the chart that we got, cutting by um, a gender, Gender and age. We have male, female here. For youth and adult, teens wasn't talking about this specific show, so we filtered them out. So we can see that a youth male, which are those, the yellow one, okay, has a giant, more sh most sharpened decrease here. There are a lot of decrease here uh, of, uh, of youth female as well, but the youth male are the most um, giant decrease here. And we, we want to know why. In order to do that, we have to add what? Sentiment. Okay, to know are they talking, where are they talking? Positively, negatively, what happened down there? So how, how do you know who's an adult male and adult female? I mean, the users have to identify themselves? No. We have these classifiers that I was referring to that automatically get a text and classify to be a, a male, female, and, and age, uh, determine its age and, and the sentiment. Just from the, the way they write. Right? I, I'm, I'm not sure I'm understanding. Based on the writing style of the author, right. Uh, some of them based on the writing style, yeah. So, uh, some of them, um, yeah, basically most of them. The issue here that our technology um, involves um, sophisticated text analysis, uh, part, of it, part of this mechanism is uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, if you're familiar with it. Uh, you have it in Microsoft Research here. And, and automatically, when, after we train, okay, and we teach the computer how to do that, when you get a specific text, it's run to our, through our classifiers to det uh, determine the sentiment, the age, how, the how gender. How accurate is that? Uh, we, uh, is it even from Microsoft? Uh, so the, paper, I mean, the person who did the, the primary paper on it, one of the co-authors is the VP of their company. So I don't, Michael, do you remember the numbers, how accurate the gender is? The, our, our, our numbers are, what? Yeah, I think Moshe's paper, they were, they were actually very high, but that was, you know, again, I guess. The yeah, there, there's a difference between an ac academical work and industry. But uh, we're, we're, climb, we're climbing to have 80% uh, accuracy, which is notable uh, high, which is pretty, pretty good, uh, even cons uh, uh, compared to the academic world, but which is, uh, you know. For age or for gender? F for, for most of them. For, for, for sentiment, it might be, be a bit higher, but the overall accuracy is about 80%, which is very good. Even of the industry standard, you think? So, yeah, please. Do you track individuals over time, or is it just a cross-sectional graph? You can, do you, do you can do both. On an individual level, how sentiment changes? 
year. We can track, it depends if it's important to you, we can track, for example, a specific, uh, we, we identify influencers, people that, according to our, uh, to the rules that we, uh, to the, the matrices that we develop, um, are the most, we consider them to be influencers of the community. Okay, you can track them, you can track, if you, if you like to track a specific influencer or a specific user to see its sentiment over, yeah, you can do that. I don't, I don't know if, if it's not an influence why to do that, but yeah, basically you can. Yeah, of course. You have all the data there. Why can't you? Okay. Um, so, uh, we, we, did, we, we did observe that there is a sharp in, in a decrease on the youth males, and also we have an, another uh, pane uh, showing the unique authors count. Unique authors count. How many authors talked about the specific TV show at each month. And you can see that the yellow one, okay, representing the youth males, have somewhat constant increase here at uh, no, uh, November a bit, but then in December it just drop, okay? This, this low. And we are very curious why did this population of the youth males, why did it just vanish after uh, November 2005? Just and then we return a bit, but there is a big decrease here. So we add sentiment analysis to know what are we talking about. And, okay, it's, it's a bit complex, but you can hear that the red one, the youth male negative, youth male negative, here the red one is the one with the sharpened decrease among all. Okay, the youth male positive also decreases. Oh, even not that decrease in the two months we discussed about, but the negative uh, um, talk is decreasing. The, so what we did is just click on this peak of the graph and got all the messages that we were talking about. And then we used our technology you know, to know what they were talking about. Uh, specifically, they were complaining about uh, two things. One is the time slot of the uh, show. Another one was... Uh, they had some expectation for a specific character. They uh, knew the player from another series. They had some expectation. And they just, in September, it was launched in September, they had increasing criticism. Then in uh, November, it was very high. And then they just drop it for a while. Um, and so we used our technology in order to dive deep in, okay, dig the reasons, the specific reasons, why this uh, decrease of buzz was uh, appearing in this show. If we had done it online with our clients, they would know instantly that something is wrong and they can also adapt themselves and change the scripts or uh, satisfy their uh, audience. Okay. Uh, this was the trend mind system. Excuse me. And I'm going to show you some slides about what can you do having the ability to analyze text online on the internet um, in such a sophisticated manner? Okay? Uh, CGM analysis in action. First one is mom preferences. Okay? For example, you can see here that we have a bunch of, oh, this one, bunch of uh, TV networks. Okay? And the percentage of a uh, mom's conversation, mom's buzz, okay, divided by those networks. This is an example. Are you identifying moms the same way for your algorithm? Um, it was through a concept, a given concept that we, people talk about. We have, we have gender, yeah? And we have a specific concept that's talking about, I don't know exactly this project, but it's, it's, it might be done the just as easy. You, you, um, when you discuss a concept that relates to motherhood, and we do the, uh, identified by, um, um, by gender, and you have analysts checking what, what, what is the result, so it's not a problem, not at all. The concept is essentially the, the boundary or the characteristic, the context of the sample set, and then you would right. apply um, some classifier with features that are trained to, to ferret out within a given concept. Um, Yes, but it doesn't have to occur in this sequence. 
because we can the, the classifier, the sentiment and, and, and age and so on, might be determined by, by the sources that the data comes from. So the concept might be determined before that or after that, but the concept is just narrowing your set down, you know, to, to be in specific context. It doesn't have a, a specifically or necessarily to do with the, uh, the classifiers coming before or after. It just gives you boundaries about what subject, what topic, if you narrow it down to that, you are talking about, you discuss. How do you filter the data set and structured data set to, to exclude the things that are outside the concept that would otherwise you know, randomize right. the results or dilute the results and, and, and get a more uh, pure data set to work with? How, how do, you, do we increase the precision for? Uh, of, of the concept or the context. Okay. So, the concept uh, actually is uh, defined by once, by uh, uh, manual, right? by uh, analyst. And we have a sophisticated mechanism to allow the, um, um, the analyst, um, sophisticated mechanism and algorithms in it to allow the, um, to assist the analyst of um, uh, increasing the precision. So he, d he defines some initial assumptions, then we uh, fine grain it, okay? We and we uh, suggest more accurate set, and then it goes on and on and on and on until he feels that he's, he reaches, uh, he, he sees that he reaches a certain amount of um, of coverage and accuracy. Then we just check it in, and we monitor that over time. Okay. Any more questions? Demo? Okay. Um, here's another example. Okay. What factors do I have to choose for a specific service provider? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, we're talking about uh, cell phones here. So we have positive, negative, and mixed attitudes. And you have all sort of um, components or, um, uh, for example, handset uh, drags. Um, 10% of the uh, negative attitude. Uh, it, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't uh, for a specific variety, just to give you an example, that we can actually um, slice out beside the sentiment that we see here. Okay? We can slice out the, uh, the context, which is the uh, cell phone, whatever we're discussing here, and the subcontext, which are the uh, parts that, uh, or the services that people are complaining about or happy about, okay? And we can actually take the 100% that people are talking about and divide it, uh, it might be overlapped here, but uh, divide it uh, how people talk, what their complaints are, where should you, should you focus? You're a solar comf company. Where should you focus in order to make your clients happier? And where to, to you have these limited resources, where do you focus in order to um, increase uh, the satisfaction of your products the most. Uh, new product launch, okay? Um, this slide that I uh, have uh, uh, several models of uh, of cars, if I'm not mistaken, but it's not that important. And we'd like to uh, measure how uh, that these models positively impact in the parent brand that they belong to. Uh, we have here a um, column that the blue one is better for brand and uh, orange one is worse for brand. I mean, that, that for, for using that example, you can actually um, knew what, you know what people are talking about, uh, uh, your parent brand, when, and whether this um, specific model that you have uh, uh, got out of the market, did it did, did it did better uh, your uh, image of your parent brand, did it worse, um, and so on. This is, of course, uh, analysis done by analysts based on our uh, content system analysis. Uh, transfer. Okay. Um, we would like to examine where did the discussion about transfer occurs before and after the Oreo a famous lawsuit. So you can see that uh, talking about 
uh, dividing by percentage all the population that we're talking about trans fat before the lawsuit, pre-lawsuit. Okay, you can see the division of the percentage here. Okay, you can see that the mainstream uh, sources or forums or blogs, there were only 11% of uh, the talking, of the whole, whole talking about trans fat. Post the lawsuit, you can see that the mainstream forums, sources, are 32%. Okay? Uh, this means that the main public, not, not specifically discussing health or fitness or dieting, okay, we're aware or we're discussing the trans fat impacts. Um, you also should take into consideration that after the lawsuit, of course, the whole, uh, among the whole area there was a larger volume of you know, people just started talking about it. So this is the percentage of a large or increasing volumes of posts discussing the trans fat. So th this way you can actually you know, monitor uh, who is talking about, what they're talking about, how did they historically talk about before and after events occurred. It can be this type of uh, event. It, it can be pre-launch of a product and post-launch. It can be pre-launch of a TV series. Okay, what happened? How the graph of buzz went? Who is talking positively? Who is talking negatively? Who is talking at all? Who is the population? Does men talk more about it right now or does women? Okay, if women does talk about it right now, does it talk positively or negatively? Talking negatively, what, did, what exactly did they dislike about what they just launched? The product, the TV show, whatever. Okay, and it can do all of this online using millions and millions of messages. Well, what, what's mainstream? What do you, how do you define it? Um, this is a, an, the analysts define that. Those are not specific to food, dieting, nutrition, health. Might be concerned, it might, it might be... Discussions? What? Just general discussions? I don't know, for this project might be about, uh, yeah, uh, general discussion, might be a, a, a discussion of food in general. It's it more, most likely uh, food in general, not specific dieting or health or whatever. Uh, yeah, but this is a specific project, so this is that the demonstration, the specific uh, details are uh, maybe, yeah. Neglect here. TV shows. Okay. So, we have here a bunch of TV shows, and I'm not referring to the specific graphs since they're not, um, and I'm not, um, can, gu can guarantee that it will not change because we're displaying them. But the issue here is that you can see the, uh, the buzz, okay, of each TV show since April, where they were launched on September. Okay, you can see that it, it, all, all, all over these prior month, prior to September, people are talking, you know, pretty low level. And where in uh, August or so, end of July, starting August, all the promos, just the previews, just popping up. People are starting talking about. And then in September, you can actually see after that who is doing better, who is, uh, who, who, uh, who is being talked about more than other, others, and how people talked about it. For example, uh, out of the whole, the 100 percent of uh, messages talking about discussing a specific TV show, you might want to track your favorite one. Okay, we can show the sentiment in September 2005. Okay, for example, my name is Earl. They're uh, they're sort of they're decreasingly by uh, their positive uh, portion. My name is Earl got 67 or 68% positive out of its total and just uh, about 7 or 8% negative and so on and so forth. This is very, very beneficial, extremely beneficial for the, um, for the industry, uh, TV industry uh, or might be any other industry that you launched a product, you don't want to know uh, how did you do, do, you want to save your product before uh, it might be too late, uh, and you can do that online and analyze what people are talking about. Uh, another uh, aspect, yeah, I'm gonna just about to finish. Um, it's Oprah, uh, uh, Oprah and Pontiac. She lived uh, Pontiac uh, in a show, and we can actually uh, try to, according to the uh, 
various of sources in the General Motors segment and other general interest uh, sources to see if uh, there is a linkage between uh, uh, Pontiac and the uh, model that she gave to her uh, viewers or General Motors itself and you can see how what was the impact of giving uh, giving up these uh, cars live and was it worth it? Okay, I'm not going into that too much because we're out of time but this is uh, another way to analyze the, uh, things that we can uh, uh, get with our system. We have all sort of interfaces. For example, we have the bullseye interface. We can uh, choose a specific um, uh, phrase, word that we'd like to analyze. For example, Nike. Okay, we can get the um, the matching of the uh, all sort of uh, slices here, but the matching of the uh, leading keywords. For example, a uh, business env uh, environment. You see here, Gap, Reebok, all sort of. We can see the uh, attributes, for example, awesome, favorites, different, better, and fun, how they relate to Nike, uh, are they close, are they uh, uh, far, are they close to themselves, there are a lot of measurements here, and products and related concepts, well, okay. As you can see, we can slice them uh, as far as we want. Okay. Um, this is another uh, interface that we have. Uh, the green one is positive, the red one is sentiment negative. And you can see, for example, this one, this, th those are all clusters, word clusters, that we identified within our data. This relates to, uh, um, to a specific project that I mentioned earlier about a cosmetics uh, company, huge one. Uh, we're talking to them, they say, okay, you go ahead, see what you, you can come up with. And we analyzed their the data that the CGN data that people are talking about on the internet, and we've come up with this cluster A, 47 percent, 47 percent was specific um, um, portion of what people were talking about was negative, negative area, and people were talking about hate the cheap, what? Okay, the cheap packaging for the part to fix it, to dusty, get dirty and so on. So we actually uh, come up with a notion that there is a whole line of products that the packages are falling apart. People are not happy with that. They didn't know that. All the focus group and all the money they invest in uh, uh, sensing the, ha the happiness, this happiness of their clients, they didn't know that. We came with this finding. Uh, it was pretty shocking. And after that, they were fixing this line of products and profits were up. This is something that would, they would never get anywhere else but the CGM um, sphere, I would say. And all the various way of reporting things, tables, graphs, and all sort of wolf's eye and, you know. Okay. That's about it. Thank you very much. I'd be happy to answer all additional questions you had. So I have a question. We're, you're, you're currently providing this service to us. Which, which groups are currently using this? Which markets? Uh, we have... Uh, yeah, within Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft, I, I don't really uh, know. This is a marketing uh, issue. I don't really know who, what exactly, uh, who is exactly using this here. But uh, if you get in touch with... Uh, you, are, you are marketing, right? Yeah, I am marketing. Okay, so you mentioned uh, our names. It's uh, pretty, you know, pretty much. I know that there's a, there's a, the PR team is using something called Buzz Metrics, and I'm wondering if this is the same. This is tool. us. This is us. Okay. I, I don't think they're using the tool itself, but rather getting reports from us okay. based on this tool. Yeah, this is Buzz Metrics. Right. That's is, us. Is there a way that you can tease out like one of the tasks that uh, I'm trying to answer? When we launch uh, some new advertising for uh, Windows Vista, mm -hmm. try to understand if that's really creating a buzz. And I'm thinking that this tool might be helpful in trying to identify conversations that are coming up around this. Is there, is there, is there a way, do, 
this is yeah. the, the, exactly what we do. Yeah. This tool, again, is uh, what I just shown you, the trend line the, is the earlier version. We are way past that. This is exactly what you do. You come up with a, a question. I want to know if my uh, advertisement did well. I know the people are talking about that or talking about something else like it, dislike it. Did it make any effect before? We were talking before in this rate. Did it talk yeah, it's more about Yeah, showing like what this was before launch and then, you know, with the launch. Right. So is there actually any Exactly that. that yeah, exactly this? that. That we do. We have historical data and that's exactly what we do. Pre-launch and after launch and how we were talking previously, what the focus was previously, what the focus about if it's a new product, it's hard to know what was previously, but if it's an ongoing uh, you know, product, you have the new version, people are talking, if they're talking about it, how they're talking about it, that does the complaints more about X and not Y, with Y were fixed earlier, then they're not complaining about it, and yeah, exactly this. This is exactly what we do. So you folks um, develop your own visualization assets, so you do things like interesting drill downs, Yep. Yeah. yeah. We have uh, our tool is basically inner tool for our analysts. We have an outside, the brantles might be um, visualized outside for specific purposes, for specific clients, but mainly, yeah, nowadays mainly our uh, analyst uses that. Yeah. And it's fully configurable. It's, it's much more complicated than what I've shown you. We, has, we had phrase mining. We had come up with phrases that we were using and what we're using. We have um, clustering. You know, cluster. I've shown a bit clustering, but we have much more sophisticated than that. And yeah, but it's, it's definitely worth the money that people spend, the company spent about um, um, knowing what the public thinks. And you also have to take in consideration that if a person approached his laptop or his PC, got into a uh, blog or a forum or whatever and expressed his opinion, whether he was satisfied or dissatisfied, it did something to him that he, he you know, he, 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 he bothered to go and express his opinion. So you might want to get that. You might want to get that opinion if he had to write you a letter or call you or complain. And people f feel freely to talk about, you know, they are anonymous we talk about expressing their feelings and talk about freely about whatever they uh, think of their product, of the singer, of the uh, launching of a TV show, whatever. Any more questions? Uh, actually, uh, in what languages do you use do you like the smiling thing and all that? Currently, we're using, we're using mainly English. Uh, but we're uh, certainly uh, the, the adaptation of the, the amount of work in order to, to work with other um, uh, languages is pretty small. And we actually have our plans somewhere, and I, I don't the management, but we have a plan somewhere to invade the European, uh, European market. Yeah. But right now we're focusing on the. Uh, English for example. It's easy to take a brand new language and be able to categorize males and females and stuff like that. I'm not saying it easy. I'm saying that the adaptation, the uh, the amount of work of adaptation in order to uh, be able to deal with new languages, it's not that much. It's pretty, pretty, I don't want to say pretty simple, but it's not that much. Just, just to give an example of um, what English is English, the, the main features that, that were distinctive between the, the genders in, in English writing, uh, it was things like pronoun frequencies. Right? So, you know, it's, it's features at that level that for English make that distinction. And so you don't need like hardcore linguistic analysis, you don't need to do parsing or deep semantic analysis for, for these features. Now, the question is, you know, in another language, do you even have pronouns, or is, is that going to be the same feature? But it's probably something around function words, you know, possibly morphology. So, you know, it's not a one-to-one -one translation, but it's, it, there's a good 
good <laughs> chance that you can get you know a, a co comparable feature set in another language without doing very costly adaptation to a, to a deep language Definitely. analysis. Definitely. I, again, I didn't say it's going to be easy to determine those things in other languages, but we done it before, and we, you know, it's not going to be that big issue. There, are, some languages are going to be easier, some languages are going to be difficult, but we can adapt our system just as easy. Thank you all for listening. Thanks, Thank you.